Ezekiel 25. We about to go kind of quick, so get your focus on, get your focus on. Okay, but in Ezekiel 25, God gives Ezekiel four judgments to release on four different nations. And we're about to go through that really quick because the Holy Spirit told me this is what's happening right now in the earth. He's releasing these exact judgments in the earth and other judgments as well. But in verse one, it says this, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, set your face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Tell the Ammonites to hear the word of the Lord God, for this is what the Lord God says. Because you exclaimed, aha, when my sanctuary was profaned and when the land of Israel was laid waste and when the house of Judah went into exile, therefore I will indeed give you as a possession to the people of the east. They will set up their camps and pitch their tents among you. They will eat your fruit and drink your milk. Okay, before I go any further, let me give you some clear context of what the Holy Spirit is saying in this. Because one of the reasons why Ammon or the Ammonites, that nation, went under God's judgment. For one, they worshipped Molech and Chemosh, which are demons and deities. And they worshipped other demons too, but that was like one of the, the prominent ones that they worshipped. On top of that, God says in verse 3, that because they exclaimed, aha, when his sanctuary was profaned and when the land of Israel went in, uh, when their land was laid waste and when Judah went into exile. And so when I looked up the definition of aha in Hebrew, it means having satisfaction over the misfortune of others. So the Ammonites were a people that had satisfaction when God's people went into misfortune and God said, because of this, I'm about to bring my judgment upon you because God knows the intent of every man's heart. He knows our thoughts. He knows our emotions. He knows everything about us. He is our creator. So there's not nothing in us that he doesn't know about. God said, when Judah went into exile, meaning when God's people was captured by other nations, he had satisfaction over that misfortune as well. God said that because of this, he's gonna allow other nations to set up their camps and pitch their tents among you, meaning I'm about to allow other people to come into your land and take over. They're gonna take over your houses. They're gonna take over your businesses. I'm allowing other to come, others to come in and take over what was supposed to be yours. God said that he was gonna allow uh, Rabbah, which was the city, the capital of Ammon, to be a pasture for camels and a resting place for sheep. Meaning it's, it's nothing there. Like when you see a pasture for cam camels and animals and sheep, you don't see houses. You don't see businesses. It's just grazing land for the animals. God said, then you will know that I am the Lord. Then you're going to have some respect for me. Then you're going to know who you playing with. For this is what the Lord God says. Because you clapped your hands and stomped your feet and rejoiced over the land of Israel with a heart full of contempt. When I looked up the meaning of contempt, it means expressing malice and hatred. They were filled with malice and hatred for God's people, and they treated them as such. I'm sure you may know some people who you feel like every time you go through something or you have a downfall, they seem to be happy. They seem to be upbeat about it. For this is what the Lord God says, because you clapped your hands, stomped your feet and rejoiced over the land of Israel with a heart full of contempt. Therefore, I will indeed stretch out my hand against you and give you as plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the peoples and exterminate you from the countries. I will destroy you and you will know that I am the Lord. Now, this next prophecy, uh, Ezekiel 25, verse 8 through 11, is about Moab. And this is the thing. See, Moab and Ammon are brothers because if you remember in the book of Genesis, when Lot 
was in Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent angels in to rescue Lot and his family. And the only ones that survived was Lot and his two daughters. His two daughters both got him drunk and took advantage of him. And they both had babies by their dad. So you know what I'm talking about. So they are brothers. They're related as nations, Moab and Ammon. So this is the prophecy about Moab. This is what the Lord God says. Because Moab and Seir, which is another city, but we'll get to that in a minute. Because Moab and Seir said, look, the house of Judah is like all the other nations. Therefore, I will indeed explode, expose the flank of Moab, beginning with its frontier cities, Beshemeth, Baumion, Kiratham, the glory of the land. I will give it along with the Ammonites as a possession to the people of the east. So the Ammonites will no longer be remembered among the nations. So I will execute judgments on Moab and they will know that I am the Lord. So when God says here that Moab said, look, the cities of Judah or the house of Judah is like all the other nations. So when you're God's people, you're not like everybody else. See, Moab may have gained the victory over other peoples and over nations, and they may have conquered other lands, other places. But when they even thought, oh, the house of Judah is like all the other nations, we, we, we about to do them in. God was like, you got to twist it. This is my people. This is my land. They're in covenant with me. See them other nations? I allowed you to run through them because I wasn't a God. They didn't choose me. They chose to serve demons. So they got what was coming to them for serving demons. Y'all demons couldn't protect you, huh? But if the enemy start thinking that, oh, they just like everybody else. We did a kick door in so-and-so, so-and-so's house. We shot up everybody else. We finna do it to this. And God is like, no, th this is my house. This is my people. And I protect them. They are the apple of my eye. If you touch them, you touch me. Genesis 49, 25, I will contend with those who contend with you. So you are under God's obligation to have covenant protection in your life when you are a covenant keeper, meaning that you obey Jesus. You don't just call yourself a Christian, but you live contrary to what a Christian is and you live contrary to the word of God. But when you a real Christian, when you really follow Jesus and obey him, you're under covenant guidelines and obligations to be protected by God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus. So God had to put Moab in its place and let him know, no, my people, it's not like all the other people that you did X, Y, and Z to. It ain't happening right here. So the next part, God says, I'm going to explode, expose your flanks. I'm going to even tear down the glory of their land. God saying everything, their economic system, their prosperity, their gifts, their talents, total wipeout, total annihilation, total destruction. And this is not something that's just happened in biblical times. You've seen what happened in Hawaii. You've seen what happened in Hawaii. I'm going to get more to that at the end because some people was like, Oh, Oprah did it. And then I heard some people be like, oh, these organizations did it. And all of that could be true. I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. But back to the revelation here in these scriptures. So the Lord had to let Ammon and Moab know you're, you, you're not going to get away with what you got away with doing to other people, to other nations, to other countries. Because this nation is under God's eye, is under God's watch. The prophecy against Edom and the prophecy against the Philistines are the last two prophecies in Ezekiel 25. And let's go ahead and jump into that. This is what the Lord God says, because Edom acted vengefully against the house of Judah and in, in so doing incurred grievous guilt. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. I will stretch out my hand against Edom and cut off from it both man and beast. 
I will make it a wasteland, and from Teman to Dedan, they will fall by the sword. I will take vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they will deal with Edom according to my anger and wrath. Then they will know my vengeance, declares the Lord God. Because in the scripture, I believe in Romans 12, vengeance belongs to God and he will repay. Now, in this prophecy against Edom, it said that Edom incurred grievous guilt. And one of the reasons that the Holy Spirit told me that Edom incurred such grievous guilt because they acted vengefully against the house of Judah is because Edom, the nation of Edom and the nation of Israel and Judah, they're brothers because uh, Judah, Israel, God's people descend from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And, you know, Jacob, uh, God turned his name into Israel. And Edom, the nation of Edom, is birthed through Esau. And if you go back in the book of Genesis, that's when Jacob and Esau were at war with each other. Jacob took the blessing and so forth. Go back and read that. But uh, the nation of Edom and the nation of Judah and Israel, they're brothers to each other. So in, in this prophecy against them, it says, because Edom acted vengefully, against the house of Judah. So when your brothers or sisters, rather naturally or in Christ, are acting like they're an enemy to you and they're doing hateful things, they're setting you up, sabotaging your marriage, um, ridic ridiculing you on every turn they get, they're doing witchcraft against you and your health. God said he's gonna take, unfortunately he's gonna take grievous, grievous guilt. He's going to hold grievous guilt to them unless they repent, of course. And that's always the hope that anybody who's in any wickedness, any sin will repent, that they will come to their senses and repent before it's too late. Because this type of judgment is not just talking about getting a slap on the hand type judgment. These, this type of judgment that God has me releasing, for one, it's about nations, again, like Hawaii, and the level of destruction that they went through. This is the type of judgment God is talking about because the time is almost near. I really believe that we are living in the last days. Now, what part of it, I don't know because no man knows the day or hour of God's return. But when you look at what's going on in the earth, all of these natural disasters, the level of wickedness has gone up several notches since three, five, ten years ago. The the what's being the, the the level of evil that's being done openly now these days was not happening three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. So you see the level of wickedness and demonicness, how open it is. And that's technically a good thing that is so open because now no one can say, well, Lord, I didn't know. Because God is making the enemy expose himself for the evil that he really is. The next prophecy is, um, and just to, before I go to the next one, just to expound a little bit more. When God said he's going to turn the nation of Edom into a wasteland, a wasteland is a barren land. It's filled with destruction, ruined homes. It's in a drought. There's no water. It, the water supply is completely cut off because the land has been brought un, under total destruction, total annihilation. So th this level of judgment isn't anything to play with. And that's why God is calling everyone with a sense of urgency to repent. Um, the next prophecy is against the Philistines. It says, this is what the Lord God says, because the Philistines acted in vengeance, taking vengeance with malice, um, taking vengeance with malice of soul to destroy Judah with ancient hostility. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. Behold, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will cut off the Chethriites, which is a tribe, tribal people, a part of the Philistines. And I will destroy the remnant along the coast. I will execute great vengeance against them with furious reproof. 
Then they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. So when God says he's going to execute great vengeance among them with furious reproof, when I looked up the Greek, uh, the Hebrew definition of furious, it means burning, heat, anger, poison, hot displeasure, hot tempered venom. And reproof means chastisement, that God was going to bring about their chastisement through this punishment. It said the Philistines acted in vengeance, taking vengeance, meaning that they were vindictive. That's what vengeance means. They were vindictive and they desired revenge. As God's people, we are not supposed to have this character if you do surrender it immediately. And I'm not even saying that some people haven't done things to you or against you or your family that warrants that emotion of, I want to get revenge against them. But when Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you allow him to take vengeance because he is a just God. He is without sin and he's the only one that can take vengeance out on anybody because he's a holy, sinless God. So you allow him to defend you in that way and you surrender to him wholeheartedly because no one is worth you going to hell. No one is worth even your health. Because when you have hatred and malice and you want revenge and you want to go after people to harm them, that brings about sicknesses, disease, that makes you out of order with God. That makes you susceptible to the plans of the enemy because you're dealing with hatred and vengeance and revenge. So now you're giving the enemy access to come in and torment your life. And, and nobody is worth that. Ain't nobody worth all of that. Even if it's hard, even when it's difficult, surrender those emotions to Jesus. Ask him to deliver you. Ask him to remove it. Cast it out of yourself. You can pray it out. Of, in Jesus' name, I cast out of me revenge. In Jesus' name, I cast out of me malice. In Jesus' name, I cast out of me contempt. In Jesus' name, I cast out of me hatred. Because that's what Satan wants for you. He wants you to have all those things so he can have open access to your life and to your blessings. And don't let nobody and no one hinder the blessings that God has for you. Because you're struggling with this type of stuff. Not only that, God's judgment is coming to that. Because when people carry that, when they're housing that, that they're following Satan. Whether they realize it or not. Those are the characteristics of Satan. And God has said, no, have the characteristics of Jesus, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, love. So the Philistines had an ancient hostility, meaning they didn't even have to know them to hate them because this ancient hostility was deep rooted in the bloodline. So when you see nations not liking other nations and nations having hatred towards other nations, not because something happened between them personally, but because it's in the bloodline, it's in the DNA, those strongholds are just reproducing through the bloodline and nobody, nobody has risen up to cast it out, to pray it out, to renounce it. But God is calling all of us now in this moment to repent, to return back to him. Allow God to defend you and fight your battles. Don't take on the mantle and the characteristics of Satan. Allow the Holy Spirit to mantle you and protect you and to lead you in your character and your emotions and your thoughts. Surrender total control and total autonomy to Jesus Christ. He is here for you. He is our redeemer. He is our deliverer. I am a living witness. He can deliver anybody from anything because he did it for me. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus name.